हेलो एवरीवन आई एम शिवानी एंड वेलकम टू सिविल सीरीज एज यू सी द थंबनेल ऑफ दिस वीडियो सो यू नो दैट दिस इज द पार्ट टू ऑफ बीएमसी प्रैक्टिस क्वेश्चन सो लेट्स स्टार्ट विद द क्वेश्चन फर्स्ट फर्स्ट क्वेश्चन द रूम टेम्परेचर स्ट्रेस ट्रेंड कर ऑफ फोर मटेरियल्स पी क्यू आर एंड यस are shown in the figure below the material that behaves as a rigid perfectly plastic material is so this is a graph and in that graph they ask which graph is behave as a rigidly plastic material so for that uh, graph this this is the chart and from this chart the rigidly plastic rigidly perfectly plastic material the graph is parallel to strain axis and that axis is a horizontal so here s is behaves as a rigid perfectly plastic material so option number 4 is correct and the graph for ideally plastic material is first initially the graph in that graph stress is directly proportional to strain and next the stress is constant and strain is increasing then for perfectly rigid body stress increases strain zero then for nearly nearly rigid body this inclined line is this uh, graph for uh, stress strain curve then for incompressible material the stress is zero and strain is increasing then the stress strain curve for non linear elastic material is straight initially means stress strain are uh, proportional to each other initially and then form a curve like structure and these are the examples for these different types of material or a body then question number 2 a village has a population of 200 with an average rate of water demand of 100 liters per capita per day a rapid sand filter having an average filtration rate of 100 liters per hour per meter square is to be designed for water treatment the area of rapid sand filter required is so for area of rapid sand filter formula is design discharge to average filtration rate okay so first write down the given data so in the given data uh, the ratio of maximum demand to average demand is 1.5 so village population is 200 then average rate of water demand is 100 liters per capita per day then average filtration rate is 100 liters per hour per meter square convert it into a liters per day per meter square by multiplying 24 then ratio of maximum demand to average demand is 1.5 so this is the formula to calculate the design discharge design discharge is 1.5 into village population into average rate of water demand so this is the design discharge and average filtration rate is given so the area of rapid sand filter is 12.5 meter square so option third is correct third question consider the following statements regarding the slope of cos tan curve first option is it is given by difference between normal cost and crash cost divided by crash time then second it is given by difference between crash cost and normal cost divided by difference between crash time and normal time third it is given by difference between crash cost and normal cost divided by normal time and last is given by a crash cost divided by crash time okay so this is the graph for a cost slope and in that x axis is belongs to time y axis is belongs to cost and uh, cost slope is nothing but the slope of this straight line cost slope the formula is given as the crash cost means cc minus normal cost means cn divided by normal time minus crash time okay so this is the formula crash cost minus normal cost divided by normal time minus crash time and this cost slope is uh, approximately a straight line and slope of that straight line is nothing but a cost slope and which is very helpful in the project cost analysis so in, in this question option number second is correct 
टू ओनली मीन्स इट इज गिवन बाय डिफरेंस बिटवीन क्रैश कॉस्ट एंड नॉर्मल कॉस्ट डिवाइडेड बाय डिफरेंस बिटवीन क्रैश टाइम एंड नॉर्मल टाइम फोर्थ क्वेश्चन डी बाई टी डब्ल्यू इज लेस देन और इक्वल टू फोर हंड्रेड एप्सलॉन डब्ल्यू हेयर एप्सलॉन डब्ल्यू इज स्क्वेर रूट ऑफ टू फिफ्टी डिवाइडेड बाई एफ वाई देन इफ डी इज अ डेप्थ ऑफ वेब एंड टी डब्ल्यू इज अ थिकनेस ऑफ वेब ऑफ प्लेट गर्ड इज सच दैट सो दीज आर दप्शन सो हेयर इन द केस ऑफ प्लेट गर्डर द रेशो ऑफ डी बाई टी डब्ल्यू नोज अबाउट द आर यूज टू नो अबाउट द स्टिफनेस so if d by tw ratio is less than or equal to 400 epsilon then end bearing stiffness intermediate transverse stiffness longitudinal stiffness at point 2d from the compression phase and at the neutral axis are needed okay so here option number third is correct if that ratio of d by tw is less than 67 epsilon then unstiffened girder can be designed that is no girder is required if that d by tw is greater than 85 epsilon but less than 200 epsilon then vertical stiffness c1 and c2 may be provided if d by tw is greater than 200 epsilon but less than 250 epsilon then vertical stiffness along with the longitudinal stiffness at point 2d may be provided if that d by tw ratio is greater than 250 epsilon and less than 455 epsilon then vertical stiffness along with the two longitudinal stiffness at point 2d and point 5d respectively may be provided so for this question option number 3 is correct if the ratio of d by tw is less than or equal to 400 epsilon w fifth question if an activity has its optimistic most likely and pessimistic time as 2 4 9 and respectively then its expected time and variance are so the expected time formula is uh, to plus 4tm plus tp divided by 6 and that to is optimistic time tm is a most likely time and tp is a pessimistic time so expected time is to plus 4tm plus tp divided by 6 by putting the given values into this question the expected time is 4.5 and standard deviation formula is s is equals to tp means pessimistic time minus optimistic time divided by 6 which is equals to tp is 9 minus to is 2 so 7 by 6 as variance is a square of standard deviation variance is a square of standard deviation so variance is 49 by 36 7 square is 49 and 6 square is 36 so variance is 49 by 36 and expected time is 4.5 so option number c is correct then sixth question on a ladder resting on a smooth ground and leaning against a rough vertical wall the force of friction acts okay so in this question the ladder resting on a smooth ground okay so this ground is a smooth and leaning against a rough wall okay this is rough wall and this is the ladder if the surface is smooth if this surface is smooth and this wall is rough then this ladder is slipping in this direction okay and from the wall it slip in downward direction so to support that slipping of uh, this ladder there uh, is need to be a force of friction which is upward at its upper end okay so the force of friction is like this so upward at its upper end this is the force of friction for this condition then question number 7 as per the indian standard is 800 2007 the partial safety factor for material resistance governed by yielding failure of steel is so here they ask a partial safety factor for the yielding failure so for yielding failure the partial safety factor is 1.1 
then for uh, buckling also the partial safety factor is 1.1 then in case of ultimate stress partial safety factor is 1.25 in case of connections there are two type of connection first is shop second is field and in the shop and field uh, there is a bolt bolt of friction type bolt of bearing type rivet and welds all the partial safety factors are 1.25 except the weld in case of field fabrication that is 1.5 okay so the option number first is correct for this question then eighth question as per the is 456 2000 when hyst bars are used the minimum reinforcement in either directions of the slab is minimum reinforcement in case of hyst are 0.12 percent of total cross section area are 0.212 percent of total cross sectional area and in case of mild steel means in case of fa250 that uh, percentage of percentage of minimum reinforcement in the direction of slab is 0.15 percent of total cross sectional area so for hyst 0.12 percent and for fa250 mild steel 0.15 percent option number b is correct ninth question as per is 10500 2012 the permissible limit of total dissolved solids tds in mg per liter in drinking water in the absence of an alternate source is and that tds in the drinking water in the absence of alternate source is 2000 these are the various permissible limits for the different parameters and for tds tds of the drinking water in the absence of alternate sources 200 2000 and acceptable limit is 500 total so suspended solid is 500 and permissible limit in absence of alternate source is also 2000 these are the uh, remaining parameters of various permissible limits for the different parameters and uh, these are the total suspended solids turbidity color test and odor tds alkalinity ph hardness chloride content free ammonia nitrate fluoride iron sulfate and calcium so here option fourth is correct 10th question as per building bylaws for fixing up the height of a building which rule is generally used this is simple question and the rule of 63 63 one and half rule is used to fix up the height of building so option first is correct then question number 11 0.2% proof stress means point 2% proof stress means so 0.2% proof stress is an indicator of yield stress if we apply a, some kind of a loading on a, any uh, steel body then it uh, change its shape due to application of loading and if we release that stress from the body it regain its original position but there is some value exist which is uh, beyond that stress and upon release of that stress original dimensions are not recovered okay and that remained stress in the body is nothing but a stress at which if unloading is made there will be a 0.2 percent permanent strain okay so there is 0.2 percent of permanent strain is always there in the body so 0.2 per 0.2 percent proof stress means stress at which if unloading is made there will be a 0.2 percent permanent strain option c is correct what is the mechanical extra widening required for a two lane pavement of width 7 meter on a horizontal curve of radius 250 meter if the longest wheel base of a vehicle expected on the road is 5 meter with a design speed of 70 kmph is so first formulas uh, to calculate the extra widening are 
डब्ल्यू ई इज इक्वल टू डब्ल्यू एम फॉर मैकेनिकल वाइडनिंग एंड डब्ल्यू पी एस फॉर साइकोलॉजिकल वाइडनिंग सो फॉर मैकेनिकल वाइडनिंग फॉर्मूला इज एन एल स्क्वायर डिवाइडेड बाई टू आर एंड फॉर साइकोलॉजिकल वाइडनिंग द फॉर्मूला इज वी डिवाइडेड बाई नाइन पॉइंट फाइव स्क्वेर रूट ऑफ आर सो बाय एडिंग द मैकेनिकल वाइडनिंग एंड साइकोलॉजिकल वाइडनिंग वी गेट एक्स्ट्रा वाइडनिंग ऑफ रूल so here uh, n value is 2 2 lane pavement l is 5 meter r is 250 meter v is 70 km to h mechanical widening is equals to nl square by 2r by putting the values we get the mechanical widening as 0.1 meter so option number 13 13th question which of the following relations are correct for determining the different components of bid prices so first bid price is equals to direct cost plus indirect cost plus markup amount so direct cost plus indirect cost is nothing but a base cost and bid price is uh, equals to base cost plus markup amount and first option is correct then markup amount is equals to profit plus contingency plus allowances for risk plus general overheads so this markup amount is also correct but in case of direct cost this option number second is incorrect for direct cost the addition of labor cost plant and equipments cost plus material cost and subcontractor cost all are added in the direct cost okay so option number first and third is correct so this is the direct cost labor cost plus plant and equipment cost plus material cost plus subcontractor cost option number 3 is correct first and third only next question as the depth of immersion of a vertical plane surface increases the location of center of pressure this is the formula for uh, the this is the formula for the center of pressure h is equals to x bar plus ig divided by ax bar into sin theta square so for vertical plane surface as mentioned in the question the theta for the vertical plane surface is 90 degree so sin 90 is 1 1 square is 1 so h is equals to x bar plus ig divided by ax bar as in the question the depth of immersion of a vertical plane surface increases means x bar increases then the location of center of pressure means h is if x bar increases as usual h increases but the x bar is also present in the denominator that ig divided by ax bar so because of that the depth of immersion of a vertical plane surface increases and the location of center of pressure falls closer to the center of gravity of the area so here option number first is correct then last question choose the incorrect characteristic of a contour from among the following first is a watershed line cross the contours at right angle first is correct then second the direction of steepest slope is along the longest distance between the contours so option number second is incorrect because for the steepest slope the distance should be shortest then third option two contour lines touch in the case of vertical cliff correct in the direct method of contouring the contours are not interpolated this is also correct so here option number second is incorrect option but for this question option number second is correct so these are the 15 uh, questions in the part second of bmc practice question so in, on this slide there are two questions so these questions are up to you comment the answers of these questions uh, before next video and thank you